G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is a makeshift nail gun. This weapon is made by Pignus, if that doesn't ring a bell. This is the person who made the homemade submachine gun that I looked at yesterday. And you'll see that, like the homemade submachine gun, they've done a really good job at reforging the vanilla assets to forge something new, which is actually kind of cool. This thing in function is basically a pipe bolt action pistol, and it uses the syringe rifle sounds, which hopefully means... It's silence. I can use this all stealthy like. That'd be cool if it was. And this magazine right here, you can change the magazines, but this gave me a real nostalgia trip for Killzone. And I saw that and thought, that reminds me of Killzone. And then about two hours later, I was going around the internet looking at old Killzone stuff. And I want to play that. Look, if, if they ever... I'll remaster the Killzone 2 and 3 for PS5. That'll actually sell me the console. I want to play them again. And if they release them to PC one day, oh, mate, I'd be on that. I'd be on that like a fat kid on a cupcake. Anyway, so, yeah, it's a pretty cool customizable thing. We'll go into the attachments. Uh, right now, I've got a bolt action receiver. There's three different ways you can fire this thing. Semi-auto, bolt action, and fully auto. Each of these receivers has an improved variant to give you a little bit more in the way of damage. So we're going to go for an auto one here. It'll give us 117, so less damage per shot, but higher DPS overall because of the enhanced fire rate. So we'll do that. And for a barrel, we've got a short barrel right now, which appears to be some sort of... Uh, it's like a small version of the railway gun, which is interesting. But a long barrel adds a little bit of a copper tube on the end of that, and that increases our range substantially. You can also have an electrified barrel here, which will actually increase your damage even more. And this is an ignited barrel, which actually gives you a little bit of Skyrim leftover flame damage, which normally the enemies in this game are... They're not... They're... They can't resist that. That's extra 15 points of free damage there. So I think we'll go for the ignited barrel there. And we'll move on. Now, there's only one stock you really need to worry about here. It's called the high pressure stock. It adds a little can of air on the back, which is presumably how these uh, things fling the nails, which are railway spikes, but never mind that. This will actually give you a boost of rate of fire. And I cannot, for the life of me, see why you use basically anything else. There are pistol variants of this, but I think I might keep it in rifle form because I'm not actually getting extra range out of that, which would normally happen for a proper pistol thing. Um, maybe that's just holding it two-handed without the stock, but I think we'll just go for the high-pressure stock for all of them. May incur some bats penalties, but I think the fire rate is uh, something that we need. So you can also have a medium magazine, which will extend that out a little bit. It's even got a little bit of a bend in it to because the uh this end is wider than that end so that's why magazines are like that by the way with bullets irl and you can have barbed versions of these which will do a little bit of bleeding damage and then poisoned ones which aside from adding yet another thing onto the another bit of damage onto the weapon card here so we've got four layers we can have five layers if we make this irradiated too um Poison damage is largely ineffective in this game. Basically, everything resists it, and what doesn't resist it is it does so little damage that it's not worth using anyway. So unfortunately for that, we'll have to go for a barbed magazine. Bleed damage doesn't get resisted by anything unless you go around and program it to, but I would assume that it's not. Right now, I've got standard sights, which give you basically nothing. You get improved sights, which gives you the little carry handle sight thingy that you'd find on a uh, railway gun. Normally, a reflex sight is nice. Carry carry sight thingy still there. Or carry what? Carry sight? Something's still there, but you get a little reflex light on the front. You can also have a, a scope, a medium scope, and a recon scope, which I think for an automatic variant, a reflex light will be quiet enough. And like I said, we could add yet another one in there, another bit of damage in there if we find irradiated, which I think scrolled past should be around here somewhere. There it is. Not going to do it. That's overly gratuitous, but, you know, it it's, might be something you're looking for because all of this extra damage, right? Heaps good. So, we'll create a couple more of these, and we'll go and shoot stuff. So, here's something fun about railway guns, and possibly harpoon guns in general, is that when you fire it, you'll see that the spike will be lodged into some of the surfaces which you put it in. So, uh, with that in mind, sometimes you can actually get the, uh, the railway spikes to stack onto each other, and you can actually use this to wall climb sometimes, if you're patient enough and get the uh, spikes out there far enough you can stand on them and then you can swing the door open and ride the door in and then sometimes the spikes get left there in midair but you know <laughs> unfortunately this has no 
no utility use in anything, not even like speed running uses, but yeah, it's just something that you can use. Uh, you might find that cool and interesting. You might be able to climb with it one day. If you use this with a jetpack, you might be able to find success. You, you climb those big high buildings in Boston. Tammy's done it before and she fell over. Okay, so we're in Gunners Plaza and this is the makeshift nail gun in first person. I feel like this magazine, it, it clips a little bit on your wrist, but that's okay, you can barely see it. So this is what it looks like in first person. It's got the Spyro Ignited Trilogy barrel on the front, which adds a little bit of a flamer barrel there, which is strangely hexagonal, more hexagonal than I remember, I guess, uh, the game's showing its age a little bit here, but you can see little bits and bobs, that's some gas rifle capacitors on that, and I believe the end there is a little muzzle thing, that's, uh, part of the junk jet, I think, the electrifying junk jet, and also the pistol grips don't actually turn them into a pistol, so that explains why I wasn't getting the range boosts that I expected. Um, this one's automatic, this one's semi-auto, no, this one's bolt action, and the last one, that, that one's semi-auto, they've got reflex lights just for easy target acquisition. Now, I don't know if this is going to be silent, this, don't got a suppressor on it. We get staggers, though, because we're hitting it with giant railway spikes. I don't think we'd, we've got the velocity to uh, penetrate their combat armor, so we'll just bludge them to death, I guess. That, that'll do the job. I think I was spamming on the trigger there for no reason. Plenty of stagger chance out of this. It, it, it doesn't look like I'm getting a lot of damage out of this, does it? We'll go for the head. They're unarmored in the head, but their combat armor sort of covers their head somehow. And, uh, at least we can harvest some of the, uh, rounds back, I suppose. Uh, it would have been made, would have made for an interesting challenge if I brought a limited amount. Um, but I console commanded myself about 2,000 of these rounds. And, uh, well, you can see that it's carrying a little bit of electricity thing on it because there's some lightning bolts and such showing up. And please hold still, it's hard to snipe with this thing. The non-hit scan projectiles... Well, he's giving me a sporting chance, at least. That's pretty good. And... Oh, I'm gonna shoot that mine. Haha, <laughs> I did 52 damage. Uh, probably just should've shot him. And, uh, it doesn't look like I can get sniper knockdowns. I'm gonna continue to do this. Is that an MG42? Well, if you're gonna make it that easy on me, or that difficult... There you go. Yeah, uh, I think I found another weapon that isn't... Okay, so I'm theorizing that this may be like an early early game option to someone who wants to use a railway gun, if you're a, a railroad character. <laughs> Lol. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for your hitboxes. Much appreciated. We'll move over to my semi-auto one. A little bit better damage per shot here, so I'm hoping we can use that to slice through the armor a little bit. And since Rifleman gives you a little bit of armor penetration anyway, I think this might be the way to do it. And in terms of how quiet it is, well, I'm in caution and uh, we're perma stunning that guy. It's, uh, it's, it's gameplay. I'll tell you that much. You just keep on dancing over there. I'll just keep putting more. Ooh, that, that. Nope, nope, nope. Put that down. Put that German machine gun down, which is... Actually, it doesn't look like a 42 because the barrel, I'll just pinch that, thank you. Dear oh dear, I'm in nerd rage. Let me activate it, please. Didn't let me activate it. Nice faceplant. Okay, hardcore, tough merc gunners. A little bit too much for this thing, so we're gonna shoot little babby ghouls instead. See that feral ghoul? I'm gonna snipe him. Take that. There we go. Uh, it took about three weeks until... Oh, they're all attacking the glowing one. Perfect. Thanks, ghoulish. Um, not a ghoul, it just... Uh... Oh, nice dodge. <laughs> okay. Since this thing isn't hit scan, we're having trouble hitting these targets. They're literally dodging out of the way. They're, they're ducking like so would now. That's a thing in the Australian. People would get it. So I'm gonna snipe him, I'm gonna use Nerd Rage, and we've whiffed two of those shots there. It's all crits from here on out though, which is against one Feral Ghoul. That's a Roma. 
Is it basic feral here? No, it's another Roma. Okay, I didn't pick terribly then. See that other Roma jumping and probably dabbing there? <laughs> Anyways, close quarters now. Should be right. Take this. <laughs> Bonked him over the head and that was it. You know what? Let's continue this low level rush because there's a plane that's crashed and there's usually... We might, we might find some super mutant skirmishes. This will be more of a match for this thing. So, this is the second weapon in a row that I've just identified as, oh, this is a low-level thing, so I need to go and test it on... Look at those water reflections. They're pretty nice, right? A little bit, little bit jank. I need to, need to figure out how to get those working or whether there's actual thing to make them look a little bit better. But what have we got here? This is a random encounter area. We've got Minutemen. Yeah, look at me and say, nice gun, dork, right? As you were, soldier. I think uh, the gunner skull there might tell you a different story. Yep, just, uh, <laughs> just the gunner captain is the general of the Minutemen. Anyways, uh, nothing here. Except for moments of Fallout 76 because my damage is being nerfed. It feels like I'm being damage nerfed here. Yeah, 117, that's nothing. Welcome back to the Ghoul Zone, and we're going to be using the semi-auto variant of this this time. One-shotting him. There's a behemoth over there. I'm going to totally steal that kill. Haha, <laughs> take that. Hand me that XP. And uh, there's a raider scum. That fella's usually got a fatman, so we've got to get rid of him. There we go. We got there eventually. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know if these projectiles are slower than they would be out of the railway gun, or whether this is just how they've, uh, because I don't, the last time I used a, a railway gun in 76, although I probably would have been using bats, so it wouldn't have been as noticeable, but I don't think the projectiles were going quite as fast, but we'll, we'll shoot the extra ghouls that pop out here. Yeah. May as well use them in low level areas, right? There's a couple of places where you can pick up, oh, nice. That's a pretty handy bug, don't you think? Um, there's a couple of places where you can find rail spikes, and if you've got mods, you can probably just craft them for steel, and, you know, that'll keep you running for a while, but probably won't last you super long. I think the railway gun spawns start spawning at level 30, but my memory's hazy on that because I, I knew all about this game bloody years ago, but then... Uh, well, I started playing a different one, and I didn't bother to commit much of that game to knowledge, I'll tell you that much. So, I think that'll be about it. I was going to do the Super Duper Mart, but look, they're the same ghouls, I'll one-shot all of them. So, that there was a makeshift rail gun, nail gun, sorry. If it was a makeshift rail gun, I think it'd be a little bit more electric, I think. But... It's a well-made weapon, but it's just a little bit too low-level for my taste, and it'll quickly get outdone and um, obsoleted. Not today, mate. Uh, obsoleted by other options in the game, like a combat rifle. I take a basic vanilla combat rifle over this any day, which is a shame because, I mean, the niche that it fills is probably only there for about an hour or two of your gameplay, which is not going to be around for very long, unfortunately, but... It's a well-made mod, nonetheless, just the numbers, I think, are a little bit lacking. It doesn't help that I play on a difficulty which gives everything a 50% damage reduction, but what can you do, eh? Would highly recommend it regardless, even if it is for a brief moment in your playthrough. Thank you very much for watching, guys.